layers of the abdominal wall cross-section. A problem with uh, body wall anatomy is that a student of anatomy, uh, as they start learning the abdominal wall, becomes quickly overwhelmed by the litany of the terminology and they choke on the jargon. And this is especially true when it comes to this word fascia. Um, a lot of times these anatomical terms are self-descriptive, but it's hard for students to see those individual terms in the big picture and they often forget. So they'll be taught the anatomy between here and here of the uh, lateral body wall and learn dozens and dozens of terms and then they start learning a bunch of different terms for the front of the body wall and then they'll also for the back of the body wall and often what happens is the following. As they're learning these dozens and dozens of anatomical terms preparing for some form of test, they throw them into the closet of their minds and just, just throw them inside there. And then when they go to retrieve them, it takes a while to find or if they even find it at all. And so Mark Nielsen from Lower Campus of the University of Utah and the Department of Biology helped me to see a a better way of looking and teaching at the abdominal anatomy. And that is to think of uh, it in a pattern and to take all this terminology and organize it into shelves in your mind that no matter what term structure that you find in the abdominal wall, you place them into seven concrete shelves. And that way, every time you learn a new term, you put it on its appropriate layered shelf, and it's easier to go back to retrieve. And those seven layers as follows. Skin, hypodermis, external muscle fascia, muscle and associated aponeuroses, internal muscle fascia, extrasolomic tissue, and finally, a salomic sac. And salomic sac is the term I'll use for the mesothelium lining that internal surface of the body cavity. Um, you know, terminology. So looking at this, some of you might be saying, well, I recognize skin and I recognize hypodermis and muscle and aponeuroses. That's going to be those muscles derived from the somites. But some of these other ones are a little bit more dodgy and I don't quite recognize them, but we'll cover them as we go uh, to help you become more familiar. And the power of this is any tissue layer of the abdominal wall will fall into one of these layers no matter what we are learning. You might also be saying colors. There's a lot of, there's definitely some type of a theme going on with the colors. What's going on there? So we take a look at that we'll recognize that there is a symmetry in the histology and that the colors represent the symmetry in the tissues found in these seven layers. For example, in the skin and the salomic sac, it's epithelium with some connective tissue. In the hypodermis and extra salomic tissue, there's adipose tissue or fat and connective tissue. The external muscle and internal muscle fascia is dense connective tissue and it forms a sandwich of top and bottom layers of bread to the muscle and aponeuroses, the skeletal muscle with the dense connective tissue regularly arranged, making up the aponeuroses. And so there is that, um, the colors representing the symmetry in the histology of these seven layers going from out uh, external to deep. All right, now let's do the same thing, cover those same seven layers, except using this picture from Netter's Atlas, which is a cross section through the abdomen. It's an anatomical image, so anterior is at the top of the screen, there's the left and there's the right. This is not, so this is from foot to head. In contrast, it's not the same way as looking at an axial section of a CT or MR. So let's start with the skin. That's the very outside layer and it's comprised of the epidermis and the dermis. Um, epidermis is dense, uh, pardon me, is stratified squamous epithelium with keratin and the dermis is this dense connective tissue and the prefix hypo means below. So this is the layer below the dermis. And this is primarily fat. And in the abdomen, there's two layers of this fat. There's called camper's fascia. It's the superficial layer of the hypodermis, and it's primarily adipose tissue and fat. But there's this deeper layer called scarpus fascia, and it's made of dense connective tissue, and it's the deepest layer of that hypodermis. 
The next is this external muscle fascial layer, and it's outlined in blue, and it circumscribes, goes all the way around, and it's made of dense connective tissue, and it has different names from where it's located. Like there in the back, it's called thoracolumbar fascia, and here on the side, it's fascia that's surrounding the external oblique muscle, and in the front, it's this blending with the fascia of the rectus sheath. So all of these ter anatomical terms all belong to the same layer the external muscle fascia, which is below the epidermis, but superficial to our muscle and their associated aponeuroses. And so looking at these muscle layers and start thinking, of where, how can we start looking for these friendly faces? Well, look, there's our ventral strap muscle, and there's our four-layered body wall. It might not look it, but it'll explain it. And then there's our subvertebral muscle. Well, that ventral strap muscle in the abdomen is called the rectus abdominis muscle. It's your six-pack. At the bottom, we have this tiny pyramidalis muscle in the same plane we'll talk about later. What about this four-layered body wall? Well, layers one and two is the external oblique muscle. It has a supercostal layer and a body wall layer. And there's really two layers to this external oblique. And then layer three is our internal oblique muscle. And layer four is the transverse abdominus muscle. And there's also another muscle called the quadratus lumborum. So there's our four-layered body wall. And the subvertebral layer is called the psoas major. There's a tiny psoas minor muscle as well. But there's our muscles then derived from that somite that we find within the seven-layered body wall. Then the inside lining of those muscles is this internal muscle fascia, this dense connective tissue as well. And so the, the primary way that this fascia is anatomically named is the transversalis fascia. It's deep to the transversa, transversus abdominis muscle. And this transversalis fascia is continuous with the fascia over the quadratus lumborum. It's called quadratus lumborum fascia. Or over the psoas major, it's called psoas fascia. Or it blends with the periosteum of the anterior longitudinal ligament of the vertebral bodies. But all of these, <clears throat> no matter where you're at, is the same layer, this internal muscle fascial layer. <clears throat> Next, extrasolomic tissue. This is the fatty adipose tissue and connective tissue layer that is... Um, between our internal muscle fascia and the salomic sac. Well, here we call it preperitoneal fascia because this entire cavity in the middle is called the peritoneal cavity. So this is that fat that's before that. And then in the back side of the abdomen is this retroperitoneal fascia or the fascia in the retroperitoneal space, which is behind um, or outside of this salomic sac. Now, the salomic sac that's outlined here in green is really, as I mentioned before, uh, salomic sac is a term used for the mesothelium lining that body cavity. And this is um, homologous to the parietal pleura and visceral pleura that we find in the thoracic cavity. Well, the salomic sac on the side, we have the parietal layer of the sal salomic sac. Um, and then we have this other fold in the front called a median umbilical fold. It's one of them. But to the side are two medial umbilical folds and then these two lateral or paired lateral umbilical folds. So what do all these things mean? Well, this parietal layer of the salomic sac is another way of saying there's the parietal peritoneum. And then that medial umbilical fold is also that uracus. It's the obliterated uracus. And so when the uracus is in that preperitoneal space, when the salomic sac covers it, they call it a medial umbilical ligament, but the medial, pardon me, the median umbilical ligament, but the median umbilical ligament is just surrounding that uracus. These two medial umbilical folds are the salomic sac surrounding the obliterated umbilical arteries, and then those lateral umbilical folds are basically covering the inferior epigastric arteries and veins, or those inferior epigastric vessels. So here we have all the basic layers of the abdominal body wall.